So this is a quick run through on the setup and usage of the image sampler plugin I created for Bifrost. So with the plugin installed, you should be able to create an image sampler node here. And this setup uses two, uh, two graphs, one for setting up the arguments input, and the second actually uses the sample data to simulate the particles. Starting with this first one, uh, setting up the arguments. So if I put down an image sampler arguments node, this just takes in a bunch of parameters and then consolidates it down to this array, which can then be passed to the sampler. Um, so starting with the sample coordinates, this is an array of vector twos. So these are just 2D coordinates on the image to sample from. Um, the file name, of course, is the path to the, to the image to sample. Um, and I could set it here, but in this case, I have uh, this Lambert assigned to this head, and this has a texture, so I'm just passing in the file path on this texture node to the graph, and so I'll plug that into the file name here. Um, evaluate is whether or not to actually evaluate this sampler. Uh, most of the time it's going to evaluate when it needs to and won't evaluate when it doesn't need to, but it, if you have um, file caches or, or like memory caches, things like that, it can sometimes evaluate when it doesn't need to just because it lives outside the graph, so it's not always going to be 100% right. Um, so if it's evaluating and you don't need it to, you can just turn this off. Uh, sRGB to linear just converts the image to linear, so if you have a standard JPEG or PNG, it needs to be converted to linear um, to work with correctly with the color management. Uh, precise is how precisely to sample the image. Um, so by default, it's going to assume it's an 8-bit image and sample at that depth. If you have a 16-bit image, for example, uh, you can turn this on to get that full precision at the cost of a little extra computing time. Uh, lastly is wrap UV. So if you have sample points that are outside the 0 to 1 space, uh, so like outside the image of course, these are just return 0 for the color. Um, but if you have like a tiling texture or something and you want it to, to tile correctly, you can turn on wrap UVs and it'll just wrap um, any numbers outside of 0 to 1 so that they're inside. Um, so for this setup I've got um, I've got the head mesh passed in the object, and for, for generating the, the sample coordinates, I'm just scattering a whole bunch of points on it using blue noise, uh, so they're nice and evenly spaced. And then I'm just sampling the UV property on the mesh, and so I can pass that into the sample coordinates. So I'll just get the, uh, the UV at each of those points. And then for the other options, I'll just leave, I'll leave wrap off and I'll keep sRGB on, and I can just pass this into the output here, and then connect this to the to the image sampler. So onto that second graph, um, I'll create an image sampler data node. And this just takes this output, which is a double array. And this goes into Bifrost as an object. This takes that object and converts it to either a vector four array or a vector three, depending on how you wanna use the data. So I'll create a port for this and then pass this to that. Um, and then from here, of course, you can use the data, you know, however you would use color data in Bifrost. Just to give you an example of the rest of this graph, um, I'm first passing in the points I scattered from the previous graph, and I can just set the point color. And if I show this, you can see it is setting the color, but I'm also getting color where you might not expect, where it's completely transparent. And that's because there is color information here. You just normally don't see it because the pixels are transparent. Um, but I'm leaving the alpha channel behind, so in this case, you can actually see it. And that's what this alpha multiply option is for. So if you have an image like this, you can just multiply out the, the alpha channel there. And so it'll make those points black, as you might expect them to. Um, and I'm using the alpha channel to drive some other properties. Uh, first, the point size. So larger points, or, or, or more opaque points are larger. Um, not much doing much in this image, just because it's pretty sharp transition. But if I had some in-between alpha values, it would give a nice transition there. And then delete points, I'm saying any points that have an alpha value less than 0.2, just delete them from the object. So you can see it basically just gets rid of everything outside the logo here. Um, and then I pass this into a source particles and can just simulate the particles from there. Here's a somewhat more practical example where I'm using an image sequence and I'm using it to drive the motion of the particles rather than setting their color. Um, so, of course, I'm starting with some video clip, and then I generate a motion vector using optical flow. And so this is what's actually being sampled for the simulation. So on the argument side, it's pretty much the exact same setup. The only difference is the file sequence node here. And this is included with the plugin. Um, and so this is just for using file sequences. So it takes some base path and then just replaces the pound signs uh, with the current frame. Or, you know, whatever you put into the frame input. Uh, for the simulation side, I'm um, taking that RGB data, um, I'm doing some arithmetic just to map it to the right range, but eventually passing it into the point velocity. Um, I'm also using the magnitude of the velocity to set the rate, so the faster you move, the more particles get emitted. Um, and then on the source particles, I'm just cranking the inherent velocity. So it's going to take this input velocity and just multiply it some just to give these, um, uh, these particles their initial velocity. And so yeah, the result is this cool kind of uh, motion vectors effect.